Welcome to the Quark Express Masterclass training series. Today we are going to talk about preflighting. My name is Matthias Günther. I'm going to lead you through this seminar. And we're going to concentrate on how you preflight, how you're going to use job jackets, how you can do proofing in this session. What we're going to do today is slightly different than in the sessions before. So we're going to give you the control to actually play and pause this class. It's pre-recorded and you have the controls to actually stop it, to pause it. It will be running for about uh, 30 minutes. And since we're here live with you, you have the possibility to use the Q&A panel to actually ask us questions during the webinar even when you stop or pause it. And also afterwards, we'll stay online for about 15 minutes after the video has stopped. And we're going to address your questions right away. So please fire away, except for tech support questions, please. We're going to give you options how you can actually get tech support, but tech support questions typically are too individual to answer in a webinar. So feel free to ask any other question and of course what we'd like to know from you is how you like the new format so is that more attractive than seeing a live session to actually have it play at your own speed and you can play and pause it at any second just as a reminder the Quark Express Masterclass is not repeating what you find in the manual what we're going to do is we're going to show you tips and tricks best practices some ideas how you can use Quark Express if you already know some of these things, you should be glad because I think in, then you're probably a master yourself. But I'm sure there will be one or two things that you maybe haven't seen. That's the feedback we got from the past sessions. So let's start. So let's jump right into Core Express. What I'm going to show you here is some ideas or some best practices or some tips about or around pre-flighting. So one thing that you can see here in my document is before I go to print, I should check for some, some com common mistakes or some common things that I don't want to appear in a document that I'm creating as a PDF or printing directly to, to plate. For example, down here, right hand corner, you can see I have a little text overflow. So that means that there's too much text for the text box probably. So I should be fixing that. And by having several pages, several hundred pages, that's hard to actually find manually. Also, if I look at my justification here, it seems to be a bit loose. Something that maybe directly you know, can be seen here on the page, but some other ones are maybe not that obvious, like this one over here. So that's something I would like to have Quark Express find for me. So I don't have to look for that manually. So how do they do that? One easy way that Quark Express gives you is that you go to the utilities menu and you go to line check. And in line check, I can actually define a search criteria. So I can look for these things that I just pointed out. For example, lose justification. Let's just count how many lose justification lines do I have in it's actually 80. So if I do that, then the next thing I need to do is I just ask Quark Express to show me the first line where this is happening. And you can see it happens up here already. So maybe here I need to fix something or maybe since I have 80, I probably should go to edit H and J and fix something there. So let's have a look for some other things. Again, go back to utilities, search criteria, and uh, let's maybe look for the text box overflow count. I have two, okay, so where are they? I'll go to utilities again. I go to my line check, first line. Where do I find that? That's the thing I already saw myself. So I can just quickly fix that by maybe deleting um, something here like this. So where's the next one? I don't know where the next one could be. So again, line check, next line. And Core Express directly leads me to the next page where I have a text overflow and I can fix that here. And maybe last thing I'm going to look for that is something that a lot of people forget. It's like checking for widows and orphans. So I'm going to check for widows and orphans here. I count them. I just have one widow. I say OK. And again, go to utilities, line check, 
first line and you can see there is something that I probably should fix. And Quark Express gives you a lot of tools, of course, to fix that automatically by going to style sheets and to my body text here and prevent widows and orphans. However, I think that's a very nice way of Quark Express guiding you and giving you that help to pre-flight these typical mistakes that, that could actually happen and make your design not look flawlessly. Okay, so what's the next thing we can do? The next thing what I want to do is I want to fix some of these typical challenges that I always see in documents. So if I turn on invisibles, what you can see here, that's what often isn't even something that you did, is something you get text from external editors, from your customer maybe. And they might be old school typists that they don't remember that modern um, typesetters or Word or wherever you write text, they have tabs, right? So they use spaces instead of tabs. Or what I've seen is often a lot of old school typists, they've learned that after a full stop a, a period, you need to do two spaces, which nowadays you don't really do. So I have to manually remove all of these two space occurrences and replace them with one. And that actually already gives me a clue what I can do here to automate that, to make my life easier, is I'm just going to use search and replace. For example, for these two spaces, I'm just going to do a find change. I'm going to hit the space bar twice. I'm using a software here so they can see what shortcut keys or what keys I'm pressing so it's easier to follow. So I press two spaces here. I'm going to move over to change two. I'm pressing one change here and just say, hold the option key, find the first one. I'm going to not look through the whole layout, just in this text box here. So there's my first one and uh, I can just do change and find and then change all. So I'm going to ignore this one because that's why I want to show you where I'm going to replace a tab. So what I'm going to do here is these two change and find, change and find. And down there is my next tab again. And then there is no more double space left. So if you have several occurrences and sometimes it's two spaces or three spaces or four spaces, just do change all and do that several times until everything is found and you don't find any more two spaces anymore because that means that Quark Express has found all of the double spaces and removed them. Next what I wanted to do is I actually want to remove these. Let's see how do we do we have? We have five spaces here. These five spaces. I'm just going to copy them so I don't make any mistake. Five spaces and I want to replace them by a tab. Well how do I replace by a tab? There must be a special character or some some code for tabs. Now I always keep forgetting which one that is. So the easiest what you can do is you just go back to a text box in Quark Express. You type tab, you double click to select it. I'm going to cut it out because of course I don't want it in there. I could just copy it also. And I go back to my fine change palette and I paste. And what you can see is I now have this special character in there. I don't have to remember that it was a backslash T character. So like before, find first, then change all. And you now can see that my five spaces here was changed to a tab. And of course my four spaces wasn't changed. I didn't know there was four spaces. So I probably should do the four space search, find first one, change all. And this was also changed now. And now everything aligns here. So of course that means, and you can already see that here, that if I have a lot of different amount of spaces, I probably have to look through it. But that's a really easy way where our Quark Express can support you and you don't have to do everything manually. Okay, so what's the next one that I want to do here in this document? So the last one that I have here is a lot of people hit the return key. So if I hide my invisibles again. You can see they wanted to create a space after. And of course, if you hit the return key, you only get um, one line or two lines more. You can't have half lines or quarter lines or whatever. So how do I fix that? Same thing like I did before with tabs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create 
maybe a new style sheet, right? So maybe I'm, I'm going to use this one as my blueprint. So I'm going to change a new style sheet. And this is something that I have a space after body text. And in my formats, maybe I just want the space after to be 10 millimeters. Say OK. Turn my invisibles on. This is much too much, of course, because I can see that I still have these two paragraphs here, these two return keys that somebody hit. So let's just select one, copy, put this in here. Remember to do a select all in the find what field, because otherwise you're going to have these four spaces still in there that I used before. I'm going to paste twice. So what I want to do is I want to actually replace the two paragraph signs by one paragraph sign. And what I want to do is I don't want to ignore my attributes. I actually want to use my style sheet space after body text, right? So let's find the first one. That's this one. I'm going to change and then find. You can see my one paragraph sign the double paragraph is removed it's replaced by one and this one well it had the style sheet before so let's look at my next one you can see style sheet is still body text i'm going to do change what you can see now is one paragraph sign is removed and i have my space after body text applied to the text that i searched for so i just do change all and then well, I had only one instance left, but you can see that all of the ones where I had that are actually replaced with one paragraph and applied the right style sheet. I think that's a really good time saver when you get these kind of documents. Of course, the list goes on. You can search for other things and replace them. I'm not going to concentrate on that now. What I want to do is in my next document, actually, I've done three things and maybe there's more things that what I want to do. So I want to find change in pairs. That would be nice. Unfortunately, it can't be done. Not with the user interface of Core Express. Wait, on a Mac, we do have Apple scripts and Core Express brings you some Apple scripts that ship with the software and you can extend them. You can write your own Apple scripts. And for that purpose now, what I wanted to do is I want to have a document where I change some things in one go. So different fine change pairs, for example, double spaces, right? So what I have here is that so you can later on see what I'm doing. On one hand, I have this text here. I need to uh, show you the um, show you lines. So you can see that on the left hand side, actually, these are characters that I converted to a box so that later on the find change doesn't find it because otherwise you wouldn't see the different. So this is my old one. So I have double spaces here, right? This one I want to change. I have uh, somebody wrote what's QXP. I'm not calling QXP. I want Core Express written there. I have a new phone number that I want to change. So I don't have one, two, three, four, five, six. That seems to be a placeholder. I actually want to have my real phone number here. So there's three things I want to change. So how do I do that? Well, what I've prepared is I've prepared an Apple script and I've prepared these replace pairs text. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you the Apple script. Just briefly, you will get that Apple script after the session. It's a very quick hack that I did in maybe an hour or so. And I actually looked at a script idea that one of our users, Scripting A's, wrote in, in our forums in forums.cork.com. I just changed it slightly, not much, just that it serves my purpose here. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing all these things in this Apple script. Let's ignore that for now. So what I want to do is I want to, in the first place, want to have my uh, document to be opened by Core Express automatically. Then look at the replace pairs text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that and I'm going to use Text Wrangler actually to show you it's a free text editor, a really cool one. 
and I want to show you what I'm doing here. And this text editor, similar like Quark Express, can actually show me invisibles. So what you can see is I have uh, two spaces here, a tab sign will replace it by one tab. I uh, have QXP, a tab, this is a little triangle sign here, and I'll replace this by Quark Express. And the same thing with my phone number. Why am I actually using a text editor? I can use Excel also uh, to write out tab delimited text. And of course I can use uh, Quark Express. So I could actually show you how that looks like by just opening a text box. And that's how I could also create these pairs. Just import that place repair text, not going to convert anything here. And you can actually see now how this text box is, or this text is being constructed. I have one set here that is two spaces, a tab will be replaced by one space. Everything that says QXP will be replaced by Quark Express. And this phone number, there's my tab, will actually be replaced by this phone number. So let's run this. To be able to run this, I first need to close all of my documents. Documents are closed. Next thing, I need to remember which document I actually wanted to change. And I believe it uh, was this one, right? So I'm going to copy this document and I'm going to put that um, into this folder because what my Apple script actually does is it works on more than just one document. So you can actually not only batch change everything within one document with several pairs, you can actually have a hundred documents doing the same change. Okay, so next thing I need to do is I need to run my Apple script, right? You can compile that so you don't see the text. It's more like an executable here. I'm just going to run that. The first thing I'm going to do is throw you a little dialogue, show you one, make sure that you close all documents. We don't, we, I could auto save these. I could still tweak that Apple script close all the documents, auto save them, but then you know you could override things. So here I just wanted to make sure, yes, everything is closed. So I click on that and then I want to choose a folder. And, and this is actually the folder where I just copied my, uh, my preflight 3 EN QXP. And it tells me here, locate the folder so it doesn't matter that the text file is in here because we only work on QXPs and uh, it will process this and then open it, save it. And you will hardly see that, right? So I'm going to choose that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my replace pairs text. That's why I have these three fine change pairs in there. So I choose. So you've already saw Quark Express briefly opened, opened the document and closed it again. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to open a recent, which was my preflight 3 EN. And let's have a look what happened here. So we'll go to page two and everything has changed, right? Remember on this side, these are the old ones, which is not live text. That's why you still see the old ones. And here you can see double spaces gone, right? It's just one single space here. What's Quark Express, so the QXP was replaced by the Quark Express term. And my new phone number, actually, the 123456, was replaced by my real phone number. So I think that's a really nice Apple script. We're going to give you that, and um, you know, it's kind of at your own risk because we just briefly tested it. It seems to work well, but just make sure that you have a backup of your files because in automation, you typically don't have a dialogue coming up saying, are you sure you really want to save that? Because if you're working on 100 documents, you don't want 100 OK clicks. So I think it's it's a nice little tool to actually change everything here. So great thing to automate. And it has to do with preflight because a lot of times you're using some things where somebody says the double spaces. There's a lot of double spaces in there and that script will actually find all of the double spaces throughout all of your documents. So even if that is only your automation, I think the script is really helpful. Okay, so what's next with preflight? Let's have a look at this document here. So we used find change before to look for some things that we still want to fix in, in text and the nice thing is Quark Express also gives you an item find change. So if I want to fix some things or find some things, 
in boxes, I can use that. And there's also item styles to make, for example, shadow styles consistent. So if you can see this document here, or this image here has a different drop shadow than this one over here, right? So you can see that there's a difference here. So what I can do is I'm just going to use an item style and say, this is my shadow and say, okay. And then I apply that to that box. And then if I want to apply it to the other one, you can also see that now I have the same drop shadow. Unfortunately, the image, the, the clipping has also changed. So I need to revert that. Something is wrong there. I edit my shadow. Okay, so let's just edit my shadow. My shadow. And the reason why it changed is because the attributes for the box, the frame, and the picture, the image itself, they were taken over into that item style. And all I want is the attributes of the drop shadow. So I'll just say OK here. It's still my shadow. And now when I click on this one and say my shadow, you can see that now only my shadow changes and everything is consistent. Let's move to the next page here. Well, are these hairlines? Could be very hard to see on the screen. All right, so if I click on one, uh, you can see one point. I click on the next one, one point. This one is also one point. Everything seems to be one point. Uh, if I click on this one, no, it's 0 0.75. Still not a hairline, 0 0.25. And there's a hairline, right? So really annoying to find out which one is the hairline, which one do I need to change? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that item find change to actually search for a line, right? That has a hairline width, and let's change that to one point. So let's find the first one. You can see it's selected, change all. There was just one, and this one is changed now. So if I go back to my line, you can now see this is also one point. So if you have hundreds of lines for rules, maybe that's really handy because you can automate that for pre-flighting. Let's move on to the next page. So unproportional images. Somebody, if you look at the, the yacht here, you can see it's actually stretched. So somebody stretched it a bit to make this longer. So I probably have to go and make this a bit shorter. So this is also something that with item find change, at least you can find a clue because to do this, somebody had to unbreak the little chain here to create unproportional images. So what you could do is item find change and you're going to look for um, a box, right? And what you want to do is, not a box, sorry, uh, look for a picture. And what you want to do is you want to find where the image proportions are unlocked. So let's find next and you can see that this box is found and there's no other one. So if you say, okay, that's a good indication for me, then item find change again is a very good way of finding these things. So I, can, I think you can see the power that item find change gives you here. So what if I still find that to manual and I say, well, I want to automate that then there is job jackets and we're going to come to job jackets in a second. But before I do that, I want to show you something about previewing images. What I'm using here is Quark Express 10.2. It's a bit different in version 10 than it's in, in the versions before. And I have Quark Express 9 also open in the background. I'm going to show you something. So for previewing images, it's very handy to see all of the details here, right? And the adaptive resolution of Quark Express 10 gives you all of the details. We've heard that some people are unhappy with the performance that Quark Express 10 is giving you. So what you can do is when you close all the windows, you can actually change that to balance it more towards performance, which doesn't mean quality is bad. It's just not as good as here with the quality. I'm going to look at that in a second. So first of all, I want to show you here. This is a huge image. You can see I uh, magnified that by 500 percent. Still a very large image and performance is OK. And the quality is also good. How does it compare to version nine? What I want to do is when I pre-flight, I actually want to see all of the details of my image and see that this is working. So let's just make this a bit smaller 
And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that over here. And let's bring up Core Express 9. I have 141 about. And you can see this is Core Express 9 here at the right hand side. This is Core Express 10. So Core Express 10 gives you that, that much better quality. And in Core Express 9, what I want to do is I actually want to use the preview resolution. In Core Express 9, it's a per box attribute, which can probably be handy sometimes, but often you just want to have everything at good quality or everything at performance and not decide that on a box level. So preview resolution, let's use the good one. And you can see that actually Core Express 9 is still not as nice as Core Express 10 here with uh, the quality setting. All right, so let's move that a bit over so you can see that better. So what if, on the other hand, now I say I really need speedy processing. Um, it doesn't really fit in our topic here. I'm just going to show you that because that's what's new in Core Express 10.2. So first I need to close all of my documents. And now I can change my preference. Right, I'm going to preferences and I'm going to choose performance. And now let's reopen the document that I just had open. All right, there's the one. And uh, let's have a look. We had uh, 141. And you can see it's slightly worse than before, but it's still much better than version 9. And now I'm in performance mode, right? So what I can do is I can actually move this around and you can see how quick this responds. This is version 9. Same thing, right? But that's something you should probably test for yourself to see whether that's really the case, right? That had nothing to do with pre lighting, but of course it it goes into that area of pre lighting. You should have a look that your images look well. And in Core Express 9, you just couldn't see it so well, even if you put this at, at fuller resolution, whereas Core Express 10 shows you much better quality. So let's go back to quality. Actually, sorry, close that. Um, go back to preferences, set that to quality, and let's continue with our class. So last thing I wanted to show you is how to automate that with job jackets. You probably heard about job jackets. And what job jackets are, they are basically your design specifications and you can check against them. So if I want to find all of the problems that I might have had before. I don't want to use find change, item find change. First, I have to create a job jacket. That will take some time. It's a typical preparation time. So I'm using job jacket manager. And what I actually did, I created myself a little uh, job jacket that is by default stored in your documents folder. And in this one, I'm just going to use my pre-flight settings. And in these pre-flight settings, I've created in check here, I've created some rules. I'm going to look at the rules later on and I put these rules into rule sets. So text and images and stuff like that. Then the next thing I'll do is I go into job jackets and I'll actually link my project. I'm just going to link that to my pre-flight settings. So I say attach and now it's attached to that job ticket. It doesn't do anything yet. Next thing I need to do is I actually need to go to my job jackets and say evaluate layout. And evaluate layout shows me all of the rules that I've created. And we can look at a rule in a second. But for now, let's just evaluate. And you can see that I passed some rules and actually have some notes here. And I failed some rules. So layout setting, medium type. Yes, it's print. No suppressed images. Embedded images, I don't have any. No images missing, no modified image, but I do have PNGs and JPEGs and GIFs. And it tells me down here in the instructions, images, JPEG, GIF or PNG, please check that these are printable. And I can actually navigate here and can see, okay, it's the Quark Express 10 logo here that is probably a different one. And I could have just searched for PNGs to find out that this is a PNG. I just put everything into one check here. Same thing for boxes, right? Non-printing boxes. 
this time it's again it's noted this is a warning right this tells me it might not be printable whereas non-printing boxes maybe i'm using them for annotations or something so this one is not printing which okay i noted that and i also see that the box is slightly angled so do you really want to angle this box which which box is that yes this one i want to angle uh, this is actually fine so that's my last one this one is also fine this one is fine but wait a moment there's a text box maybe i should have done a different rule and say search for text boxes only that i angled because i don't think that i really wanted to angle this text box slightly by one percent and last thing i want to sh show here is the small text so where's my first one with small text down here it's selected let's have a look what this is so what's happening here so okay my page numbers somebody put into really really small text and that's something this is something i really find too small that is uh, two points i can not read that so i'm going to change that and maybe make that uh, six points or something like that and now i'm going to reevaluate my job jacket right my layout against my job jacket evaluate and you can see that now text has passed this rule is gone so how did i actually create these kind of things well i just went into my job jacket manager like i showed you before i used my check job jacket and i'm going to do that here on the, the higher level and i just scroll down to my rules and these rules for example uh, we set uh, angled boxes i wanted to look at so box slightly angled i'm going to edit and here i can see that i did that on boxes so i'm going to change that to text boxes and I want to check for the rotation and say next and then the rotation is greater than zero I could also do you know an and search I can say it's greater than zero and less than uh, five degrees that's the ones I'm really interested in I say next I have a description it's noted here and maybe I just say this is not recommended in this case because it's text boxes and the instruction says did you really want to angle this text box and so i have crazy new rules actually quite f straightforward and once you get used to this interface and then when you have these job jackets created you store them in your documents folder you can attach your files to them and then check against them i think it's a really great way of actually finding out whether all of your documents comply to the design settings that you set up and of course you can check also resolution color space and all these kind of things okay so almost done last thing i want to do is i want to show you one thing we talked about pictures before about images and i have a last image here and actually on screen it looks quite nice but of course i am seeing it different than you probably see it on, on youtube or via this webinar software and when i print it's different so what i want to do is i actually want to see this being proof output so I could say, well, show me how this looks in grayscale, but I'm not printing grayscale. I am printing CMYK, so I'm going to go for composite CMYK. That doesn't look too bad, so maybe that's good enough for me to prove that on screen, and then I can print and look at the PDF again and, and check that. And of course, I can also use very extreme ICC profiles that uh, are behind that here. So what I did is I also used one that, that is used for textile so i do that you can actually see that not only the image is being changed also quark express box is being changed so the colors and also all of the the smoothness goes away here because that icc profile is quite extreme let's go back to uh, my iso coated aci profile here so how do i actually set up such a such a proofing um, profile it's very easy in Core Express you find that in edit you go to color setups you go to output and then you just say a new one this is maybe uh, my rip I'm doing a composite I'm printing CMYK and then I just choose the profile Core Express picks up all of the profiles that are installed for, within the system so if maybe let's have a look uh, I have a US sheet feed coated v2 here I just say okay I save that and then I'm done I go back to the view menu and now I can prove output 
against my rib and you can see how this is changing it actually doesn't show so many saturated colors anymore so slightly different and uh, it's a nice way of seeing that actually on screen so let's get back to slides what have we seen we've seen in class three some pre-flighting techniques so how to use line check in the very beginning how do you find orphans lose hyphenation or just the text overflow that you otherwise might have to search for manually how to use find change to quickly apply things or fix things the double spaces that you typically had to look for manually and with an apple script actually for, for mac only that is with an apple script how do you change several pairs in one go or several documents actually with several pairs in one go how can you use item find change to find all the hairlines to actually fix them how do you use item styles to make shadows consistent that's something we saw how do you preview images or what should you do that you see good quality to make sure that your image also look nice and then how can you automate your pre-flighting by using job jackets that you don't have to remember everything and do that manually but just setting up a job jacket once that might take some time but afterwards with just one click to link and one click to evaluate you find out all the things that are actually violating your design rules and then at the end we looked at some color management proof so how do i quickly set up a proof setting that i can actually prove not only my images the whole quark express layout on screen again i'm going to give you a cheat sheet i'm not going to go all through all of these you're going to get the powerpoint afterwards so you can read also through what we have shown you here and last but not least my one marketing slide remember that if you like Quark Express 10 and you also get Quark Express 9 with it, if you buy the bundle, the Creative Pro bundle that we still have in effect until end of August, so if you're on version 8 or 9, you upgrade, you can buy the Creative Pro bundle and you actually get a thousand dollars or a thousand euros, or 900 pounds worth of Creative Pro tools with it. Everything's written here. And actually, if you're on version 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there's a very special offer that ends July 12th, so you should hurry because currently we allow to upgrade from any version. That's typically not uh, possible. Normally you can just upgrade from version 8 or 9 to Core Express 10. Well, on July 12th, you can upgrade actually from any version. So that's some details you can find here on our webpage. So if you have questions now, please use the Q&A panel. We'll stay online for another 15 minutes after the session if you didn't stop the video that is of course and um, we have also answered questions throughout the session because remember this isn't live and let us know how you like the format do you prefer this on demand where you are actually in control and you can stop the video and you can continue the video at your own pace or do you live like the more the live sessions that we have done in the classes before if you have support questions, tech support questions, here are the options again to get support. And until then, my only thing is to remember you that the next class actually is going to come on August 6th. That's going to be the HTML5 animation class. So not very print centric, more concentrated towards apps and HTML5 authoring with Quark Express. So I'm going to look, I'm looking forward to see you there. You're automatically registered if you're registered for this class or any other class. And of course, remember to watch that to receive your certificate. So that leaves me with thanking you for your time. I hope you enjoyed this session and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.